Standardizing the Linux desktop is something that is not really received all that well in the Linux community. And for good reason. Standards slow down innovation in new applications, utilities and designs, which ultimately results in a decrease of their variety and a bloated operating system over time. I mean, Windows is a pretty good example of that. Once you have a standard, it's really hard to move away from that. But how much of that is actually true? Is standardization really dangerous and should we continue to push against it? Today I'd like to share my thoughts about standardizing the Linux desktop as well as discuss it with you. So please make sure to leave a comment down below as well as push that like and subscribe button while you're on the way down there. I'd love to hear about it. Ok, so standards. Standards are supposed to ease development by already providing you all the things you need. Be it a specific design, the overall layout of applications, frameworks where applications can be built, or APIs which manage graphics, sound and input-output devices. Essentially everything around an operating system can be standardized. And like I said, the whole goal behind it is to ease the development of new applications and features while also maintaining a specific ecosystem that is connected and features the same level of usability throughout. But there is a downside to it as well. I believe there is a justified reason on why many think that standards are a bad thing. Let's take GNOME, a Linux desktop environment, as an example. GNOME works towards streamlining its usability by mainly focusing on their GTK4 implementation libadvita. And they are really successful doing that. Everything in GNOME feels coherent and the same, and not in a bad way. Windows have nice animations, the usability and looks is similar and it also makes it way easier for other developers to work with. But that's only if you like it. See, tastes are different. Some just don't like libadvita. Either because it looks boring, the standard it aims to achieve is too simplistic or maybe because there already are better choices out there. But here we already run into our first issue. Because standardization is good for developers and a unified experience, what good is it if a lot of people don't like it? If they want to switch it out for something else, then it's not guaranteed that everything works correctly or if another style can even get applied at all. You can't just override a framework like GTK4 with something else. And that accounts for many things on Linux. From displaying graphics and audio, to handling the design, packaging formats, and even down to how you even boot into your operating system, it's a mixed bag. And it's really hard to maintain. As a developer, if you want to make something Linux compatible, and I mean like actually run it natively on all Linux distributions, then boy, good luck. Not only do you have to consider a ton of desktop environments, which might or might not share some dependencies, but you also have to package them in different formats, maintain them individually because fundamental programs change, but you also need to support the users if they have questions. And that's just not doable in a timely manner. So most just focus on one design and one distribution and rely on compatibility tools built into the desktop environments to get it going. And that just breaks the consistency of everything. Especially gaming has a hard time keeping up with Linux development. The Linux community wants Linux native games. But to be honest, I don't really think that it's possible. Linux and its whole operating systems built on top of it always evolve. They change fundamental programs and dependencies to close security vulnerabilities or to improve performance. You have all these different display protocols, audio APIs and open source drivers which you all need to understand on top of maintaining your game basically forever. A lot of Linux games break over time and the developer just doesn't want to fix it. And frankly, why should they? Creating new games is expensive and you don't want to waste all of your staff fixing old games which don't sell anymore and don't generate any revenue. There is a reason on why nowadays a lot of developers choose Proton or similar compatibility layers to make their game available on Linux. Because Proton has standardized APIs or at least knows how to talk to others all on its own, without the game developer knowing on what's going on in the background. Gaming in general is probably one of the best examples on why standardization is really needed in some industries. 
If you sell a piece of software or even distribute it for free, you want to keep moving and not be stuck maintaining that thing all your life. Linux in particular is a very interesting case in that regard, because you essentially have two counterparts. On the one hand, you have many private enthusiasts which appreciate its freedom and the ability to swap out or develop everything you need by yourself. On the other side, you have businesses which do encourage standardization and either are or do limit their use cases and products to one specific distribution. There is close to no middle ground yet, and that's not a bad thing either. See, Linux and Linux operating systems are a creative space, whereas you can develop your own ideas and collaborate with others to build huge projects, which then again help others. Be that improving security, performance, or finding and implementing new innovations. It is just great and something completely different from Windows, macOS, and heck, even iOS and Android. Great! Confused yet? Good, because standardization is confusing. Just look at Windows. Ah, control panel much? So, what to do? How can we get all of the advantages that standardization comes with, while also keeping the freedom to constantly update and improve Linux without breaking anything? Well, it's simple actually, let's do both. Now, to be clear, this approach is not something that I personally think is right, but it is already something that is being done out there. We are talking compatibility layers. What already works with Proton and Wine can also work from Linux to Linux. The idea is basically that you have three abstraction layers. You have the kernel, drivers and even desktop environments that evolve with it. Then you have a compatibility layer which accepts its never-changing dependencies which the applications themselves use. If you are working on the kernel or fundamental desktop environment dependencies like the shell, a compositor or even on display and audio protocols, then nothing really changes for you. The compatibility layer then starts updating its support while still only exposing the same or only additional features to the applications. Now, that might sound like a solution with a lot of problems, and you are right to think so. A compatibility layer, especially one that holds a lot of, so to speak, old information, will grow in size and eventually end up just like Windows. A mixed mess. And also, wouldn't the amount of looking up updates, integrating them and exposing new features to applications take a lot of time? Yes, yes it does. And that's why it needs to be a collective effort. A new dedicated project which aims towards working together to get notified when updates happen in the backend. What changed and why it changed. Theoretically, you could offer this compatibility layer to other frameworks like GDK and link certain triggers with UI elements. Another part of that collective effort would be how to effectively split up the compatibility layer into only the required parts that a certain application would need. Of course, nothing holds forever and at some point you will need to drop some features, but at that point it's probably best to move on anyway. Or you don't and just have to deal with the size. But enough of me, what are your thoughts about this? Is there anything I missed or got wrong? Please leave a comment down below and let us hear your thoughts. Oh, and while you're on the way down there, don't forget to give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. More are already on the way and you don't want to miss them. In the meantime, you can watch this one next if you want. And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.